Yeah. Do you guys hear that? That's the sound of an empty whiskey soda. This uh, barrel-aged whiskey that happens to have a a, a, a touch of Tabasco <laughs> in it. You, you, you want to know how much I paid for this barrel-aged whiskey that has a touch of Tabasco in it? Uh, zero. Zero. Zero dollars because my neighbors wanted to get it off their hands so bad. And I'm like, Pfft. you know, I tried it as a shot. And I didn't think it was the worst thing in the world. In fact, they told me my face was a face they'd never seen before. It was like disgust, curiosity, enjoyment, um, potency, and uh, yeah, ecstasy all at the same time. So all that's all that to say is they, um, yeah, they just gave me the bottle. They're like, yeah, we've had this thing forever, and uh, we never drink it. And you know me, I like to take in shit I don't need sometimes and do my darndest to get rid of it right away because I, I like I like to purge shit I like to, I like to get rid of things I don't like to I don't like to collect I don't like to um what is that word what is that word I don't like to um collect um accumulate the only thing I want to accumulate is wealth okay my name is Jay Dennis this is the Jay Dennis podcast for May 28th, 2019, and I hope you enjoyed some uh, Bovine Lummox. It is a minute and 40 second song that I wrote back in like 2008, recorded a couple times between the years of 2009 to 2011, but I have reimagined it a little bit, dropped it down to G sharp, and uh, I'm going to figure out how to put some vocals on top of it and make it a uh, Raptor Riot song. So it's not going to be your traditional new metal or alternative metal that I typically write for Raptor Riot, but as I've mentioned in past uh, podcasts, I'm going to inject a little bit of my other influences and favorite styles into Raptor Riot. It's not going to overpower it by any means. You're not going to hear a bunch of metalcore, deathcore, thrash metal, uh, grunge, or anything. It's going to just kind of be sprinkled in there. But, you know, say the album that I'm working on has... 13 tracks on it. If one of them is a kind of a different genre, 12 out of 13 is not so bad, huh? Especially if you're enjoying the vocals coming out of moi. But, yeah, so it is freaking Tuesday night. I'm a little late to recording this podcast. I've had a very, very productive and well-to-do day. Holy shit, I'm tired. I've had a very well-to-do day. Uh, May of 2019 is actually going to end up being a very profitable month. Um, I've been putting in a shit ton of work, and um, a lot of this stuff has been in the works for the past couple months in terms of cases and things I've been writing, but it's all finally starting to accumulate and kind of close and come together. So I can't get too excited until the money hits my bank account. Basically, uh, this month is basically a wrap, you know? Still got three more days to continue to kick ass and make things happen, especially going into my birthday and then going into the month of June. Um, What's the soundtrack been as of late? Well, aside from Death Clock, Anthrax, Slayer, um, my my, my boys from Orlando and Blessing a Curse put out an album at the put out an album at the end of March that I didn't realize. Blessing a Curse put out an album called Waste, and Joshy Singer, his voice sounds like even heavier. Like they they are so fucking good. They are a very talented group of guys, and um, I don't know if they did an album release party or anything like they did with their other album, but goddamn, I am so happy to see them succeeding. I that was that was literally one of those instances where I saw like. Okay, how long is this guy? How long? How long are these guys gonna drag ass or drag out until things start happening for them? But it's kind of just like a perfect example of what you see and also what you're currently listening to, where things on the surface might look, not look like they're super successful at this time, but there's a lot of manifestation and a lot of groundwork being laid right now. Like a foundation is being built right now to build an extremely powerful house on. And I'm gonna be 28 in a couple of days. So this is my last podcast is uh, at uh, 27. So 
shit. Fred Durst was 27 when Limp Biscuit put out their first album. And if I'm going to have the same story as Limp Biscuit, I, I, I failed because I didn't have that epic first release with a with a George Michaels cover on it by the by the end of this year of my 27th year. But I don't know, man. I look kind of young for my age, even if I grow facial hair. So, I mean, I'm starting to age a little bit. I don't look, I don't look like five years younger than I am. I think I look a little closer to my actual age now. But, but I'm I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that to my advantage. But I'm also going to just completely disregard the fact that I'm not going to limit myself and say, hey, you know what? If I don't if I don't reach rock stardom and I'm playing in front of tens of thousands of people until my mid thirties, that's fine, because mid thirties is basically the new mid twenties. And the emotional maturity and discipline that I've developed the past couple of years, let alone the past couple of months, it, it just makes sense because if I did attain some certain level of fame or something when I was like 18, like some of these bands that they got big during the MySpace era and they didn't last because the internet made their egos and everything weak. Like I like to think a lot of the bands that formed back in like the 80s or the 90s like they they lasted because they didn't have a lot of these external bullshits playing into them and making them want to break, uh, break apart earlier uh sooner rather than later or maybe there's just hundreds of thousands of bands that formed during those times that just didn't make it for the same reasons as today but anyway all I'd say I am working on putting out a new of course I'm putting out a podcast every week but I'm also working on putting out a new YouTube video every week also um, you'll hear me, you'll hear me talk about it a little bit later on, but I put out a new talking thrash video a couple days ago where our, I talk about the big four's first albums, you know, Anthrax, Slayer, Megadeth, Metallica. I talk about all their first albums and I rank them and, um, kind of just share how like a lot of bands have a great first start. And in terms of my first start, if you want to go to, RaptorRiot.BandCamp.com. Go download the Sabotage GP. Download and own it, baby, for two ninety nine. You got three original tracks and a Limp Biscuit cover. All the downloads are going to go towards making this podcast better. It's going to go towards making uh, the new album. But beyond that, I am just working my ass off at my all commission career, where my my output is very much de- dependent on my input. So I could totally self-fund this um you know, paying off my debt, paying off my house, my house quicker, not having any debt ever again, and also um funding the album, never trying to get into a record label, all that shit. But in the meantime, you know, having multiple streams of, inco- of income doesn't hurt either. So, you know, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Let's uh, get those. Let's get, let's get that subscription high enough to where uh, ad revenue can become a thing. Let's get those views up. Yeah, let's go check out my YouTube channel so that I can uh, justify monetizing my videos again. Because YouTube thought that, oh, hey, man, because uh, you know, maybe you got maybe seventy thousand views between all your videos. Um, but because most of those views are on like four of your videos and you have like a, over a hundred videos at this point, mostly podcasts, uh, we're going to demonetize you. So obviously because of lack of attention. So go check that out. Go download the sabotage GP, uh, give me multiple streams of income now. Yeah. I'm not fucking around and, uh, let's make this happen. So do you guys want another? Let's let's do another let's do another teaser clip of some Raptor Riot, straight up off of uh, off of uh, um. Let's keep it in G sharp. Wait, no, that's drop A. Let's try it again. Because I run 
on this bitch Cause some my head is in each other Their walls to the Elliot Hole Separate into my balls, son Except I'm gonna change those lyrics Cause I don't much care for Elliot Hulse anymore Oh! new metal alrighty then yo what's up guys this is Jay Dennis and it is Saturday afternoon I am heading towards Guitar Center this Memorial Day weekend oh shite should I even be going there they might be pushing some sort of like hard hitting sale or something and I don't at, at, at this time, I do not have the monetary resources to uh, invest into new gear or anything. Like, unless they have, like, you know, penny guitar picks or, like, half-off guitar strings or that silly thing they always do. They're like, buy one stand, get four free. You know, you buy, you know, one guitar stand for the one guitar you have. And then you get four free for the four you don't have. I was just helping my friend move and, you know, in regular tradition, there was beer and pizza to be provided afterwards, but I have a very strong need to work out. That's not long way, is it? That happened way too quickly. Um... But no, I've been listening to a lot of Death Clock as of late, you know, from Metalocalypse, that Adult Swim show. So Death Clock, you know, up until the point where the sad thing happened where the writer of the show and basically the writer of the music, his name's like Brandon Small or something, I don't know, but I believe he passed away a few years ago, which sucks. So we were left with, you know, four amazing seasons of this show, which I, I think is like a, a, a complete series. I don't think it left off with anything. I think the show ran its course in terms of the story. And we're also left with three death albums that came out in 2007, 2009, and 2012, respectively. And it only took me seven years after the death album number three was out to finally listen to it and go like, holy nuts. It seems like they get better with every album. You know, these animated characters. <laughs> Nathan Explosion's voice becomes more aggressive. There's more growling. There's more, you know, lower register guttural sounds. And the music becomes a little more intricate, too. Um, there's a song on there. It's the last track on Death Album 3. It's called Rejoin. Easily one of the best Death Clock songs I've ever heard. It's probably, like, in their top, their top three trying to remember which song I really love off of the other two albums. Off the other two albums, of course, Thunder Horse is awesome. Um, Death Harmonic's really good. Better Metal Snake, maybe? I don't know. I've always liked Fan Song. You know, you people out there give us something more, you know, than a pocket full of cash. You give us a reason to hate. If we hate you, you mindless mutants. People out there give us something more, something. Anyway, and then off of Death Album 2, you can't fuck with, like, tracks 2 and 3, and then, like, Cyber, something, Death Strike, Cybernetic Death Strike, The Volcano, Comet, uh, but, uh, Burn the Earth, and then I think it's, uh, The Gear, The Gears, those, those songs are pretty awesome, too. All right, did I, did, I, did I beautifully just mumble through four minutes of, like, not fully knowing the, the uh, Death albums and just telling you what I like? Well, anyway, I have been working pretty hard on reviving a track that I wrote. Shit, I probably wrote this song back in, like, 2007. But... It didn't hit the studio until 2009 in the form of a demo with my old band. 
but I've revived it. I, I remember how to play it, and originally it's been it's been, it's been recorded in a couple different tunings. It's been recorded in like originally it was recorded in drop A. It was also recorded in like B or A sharp or something, but I dropped it down further to G sharp. And holy shit, it sounds great. So there's probably going to be some teasers, some teasers on this podcast that's going to showcase bovine lummox. Initially, I probably had part of the first verse written, but since the new metal revival and a few other things, um, I might reimagine how I go about doing vocals on this song. But... I'm going to make a video about Raptor Riot, what is Raptor Riot, but the, the, the short of it is we are predominantly a new metal and metal alterna- uh, alternative metal band, but I'm not going to inject a little bit of my other influences in there as well, such as like 2000s metalcore, deathcore, a little bit of 2010s influence along with like some of the modern new metal sounds that you hear a little bit in like a mirror and other bands like uh shit what are they called Kane Hill Kane Hill and um 80s and 90s thrash metal if I haven't said that already like there's gonna be little injections of other influences in Raptor Riot but they're but it's predominantly turn of the century style new metal and alternative metal that's what I love, that's my favorite music, that's what I like to write, and that's the vocal style that suits me best, but get, I get better at screaming and getting back to my, like, being able to project and everything and do better, then yeah, I'm going to revive some old songs that can't really 100% be reformed into turn-of-the-century style new metal. The original song I wrote stands the way it is, and that's what Bovine Lum- Lummox is. It used to be called Caffeine, and you can actually... I think hear a song I think you can hear it on my SoundCloud but again reimagining it making it sound a little bit better a lot of it's still the same still the same st- uh, song structure but I'm gonna spice it up a little bit make it a little better with my vocals and take it from there but as always guys go to raptorite.bandcamp.com download the sabotage DP so you can own it And always remember, kids, make sure you drink your water, okay? IJ Dennis fully endorse, with no paid advertisement, the portable gallon of water. It's a nice plastic jug where if it's heated up, it's going to release these little chemicals that, you know, kill your testosterone. But it's got a nice little handle on there. So you can make it portable, and you, you just you drink that gallon of water throughout the day, and you watch your quality of life skyrocket. You know, much like other habits and other things we talk about here in terms of being better, it might take a couple days to notice it, but I could tell you, I could, I, I could tell you this right now. After two weeks of consistently drinking at least a gallon of water a day, I've lost a little bit of weight, like good weight, or I lost some bad weight. Uh, my skin is a little more bubbly. And my energy's higher. So, yeah. That's really one to grow on. And beyond that, aside from all the hard work I'm going to be doing this weekend, you know, you know, most people are going to be probably barbecuing and hanging out with friends and family. And you know what? That's cool. That's, that's totally fine. I'm going to be working. I like to work while everybody else is sleeping. And then sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll do the inverse. And sleep while other people are working. Uh, most people are working, you know, with their traditional schedules and everything. So, but if I work when nobody else is working, then the masses are going to be more available to me when I go out to try to meet them because they're not going to be at work. They're going to be distracted. They're going to be more obligated to take care of their financial situation with me. But behind the scenes while I'm resting and, you know, just watching some TV sometimes, I have been watching White Gold on Netflix, which is a very funny, like, especially if you're like me and you're in sales, it's a funny show. You know, it takes place in the 80s and, you know, it takes uh, place in, I don't know, London or England or something. 
and it's just about sleazy salespeople, which I am not, but it's still interesting to watch. It's funny. You know, it takes a lot of the funny tropes of all the uh, themes that it... Imbi- okay, have I explained it enough? Go, go watch White Gold. Okay, they're, they're half-hour episodes. There's only six per season. There's two seasons. Not that hard. That's a six-hour commitment, okay? All right, and enjoy the rest of the program. Hey, what's up? It's Memorial Day 2019. It's, uh, it's almost 9 o'clock at night. I usually don't do clips like this that late, but for the most part, I stuck to my schedule today and put in some very productive work while most people had the day off and uh, everybody was sleeping. And I don't say that to condemn people, you know? If you got a nice, reliable salary and it's predictable and you want to enjoy your holiday, that's totally fine. I did the same thing when I used to work at a bank. But anyway, it's important today that we observe, you know, the fallen brave men and women of the armed forces. So happy Memorial Day and happy um, day where a lot of metal bands kind of write that um, obligatory, you know, what are we fighting for? song so they can have a song to share on Memorial Day or Veterans Day. That wasn't cynical. That was just an observation. (laughs) I smell weed. You know, I've lived here for two years, almost, and weed is legal here, and I've had no desire to smoke it. And, you know, at dispensaries, you know, I could easily get an edible, which is the non-lung cancer way (laughs) to ingest THC. In fact, an edible was my first experience with weed. That's right. It's probably like, what is it? I'm going to be 28 here in a couple days. What was that? Eight years ago? Eight or nine years ago, I did that. And it was awesome. And I was a lot lighter, you know? I'm about 185 right now. And I was probably about like 150 or... 160 when I did that. So I didn't have a giant slice of that cookie. So it, it, it was cool. You know, I'd do it again. But again, it, it just, you know, it's just like being old enough to drink. Like, it's not really a huge deal. It's like, yeah, I have booze at my house. But I'm not like, yeah, all the time. It's kind of the same thing with sex, too. You know, when you're 14 and you're a virgin and you think, wow, if I could have sex... Uh, or if I had a girlfriend that would uh, do sex with me, then um, I would do sex with her all the time. Because, you know, apparently I'm Joseph from King of the Hill. That's like the song with the chick with the boobs wrote. She, <laughs> she don't have hair for a dude anyway. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed all this background noise. Hope you guys enjoyed uh, a little teaser clip of Bovine Lummox, which is a song I wrote way back in the day, but reimagined it and just rewrote on Guitar Pro. I don't know if I need to turn off the chorus effects that I have on the guitars or something. When 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 it's on Guitar Pro, you're not using typical. Uh, orthodox practices with getting tone or sound because it's all MIDI. It's all digital. There's no analog. There's no natural instruments or anything. So you kind of just fudge it and try to make it sound as good as you can to the point where you'll be able to write some decent lyrics to it. So that's why I put chorus on these low end guitars instead of like on like a melody or something. But you can hear certain parts where it sounds like it skips a little bit on the guitar tracks. I don't know why when they're written out just fine. But what pissed me off was I was like, okay, I will just burn the, or I will export the track to, you know, to a wave that I could convert to an MP3. And the playback function will probably translate into a nice clean 
you know, track that I can write some uh, write lyrics to, and it didn't do that, so I have, to, I have to go back and fuck with it. But all that's to say, there is a new song in the works, and that's not the only one. I got like three or four others that I've been finishing up as of late. I've been making it a priority to consistently, because what 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 what's better, doing it 15 minutes a day, every day of the week. Or going months without doing it, but then just doing like a random four-hour session. It's the same thing with sales. It's, it's better that I make five calls a day or ten calls a day at least. You know, small number, ten calls, rather than try to crank out 60 calls in one day. Which was kind of what I was aiming for today. But I ended up, I ended up of course, having the office all to myself and... Doing all this work, I got some important admin work done. And um, I contacted some of the higher important people. But I had this large volume of people that I wanted to hit up today and follow up with. But by the time it got to about 8 o'clock, I was like, you know, Sunday evenings are a great time. It's not Sunday. Sunday and Monday evenings are a great time to call people because they're usually home, especially on a holiday. But originally I wanted to go knock on doors today because I had a lot of good luck with that um, on Labor Day last year, you know. I I had a couple people compliment me and say, wow, you're out here, you know, in the sun, dressed up nice, knocking on doors on a holiday. I like your work ethic. Like, damn right. But I love what I do. And, you know, there's times where I get to sleep while everybody else is working. So I kind of have to balance it out somehow and do some work while everybody else is sleeping. But to me, it's not really work. Like, I love what I do. And when I get into a groove, like, I really, really love sales. Like, you have no idea. Like, talking to people, asking questions. Like, I I'm, I promise you, getting good at sales is getting good at life. Because you learn how to talk to people, connect with people. It builds your confidence. And if you're selling something that's ethical and practical and extremely useful and universally needed, it's a win-win, especially if the uh, pay structure is in my favor. But last night, you know, Sunday night, hey, Hercules, hey, buddy, I swear, he, like, purposely, like, grinds up against me to get as much of his German shepherd hair on me as possible. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Oh shit. Oh. <laughs> He's got this big ass squeaky toy that was way bigger than him when he was a puppy. But now his mouth is just big enough to fit around it and somehow he can catch it in the air. It's a big toy. He's got a big mouth though. Don't you? Um somehow I thought last night it would be a good idea to try to fall asleep to Motley Crue's The Dirt, which is actually a uh, a biography or a book, I think, that was written some odd years ago about Motley Crue, but Netflix made a, a movie about it. So it's basically about, you know, it's about Motley Crue. And, uh, no, I was engaged throughout the whole damn thing. I mean, not just because my affinity and desire to be a rock star, and of course there were some <laughs> intense drug and sex scenes in there too. It's kind of hard to fall asleep with that going on. But, You know, it's just kind of interesting to see these characters get together and, like, you know, 80s hair metal wasn't really ever my favorite, but they were a little on the heavier side. And I'm slow, you know, I'm starting to like that style of vocals more, like that. You know, like when the guys go high like that. But, you know, basically had my experience with Tommy Lee, who's, you know, the drummer. My experience with Tommy Lee up until. Last night was just Methods of Mayhem, which was a new metal band that he was doing during the turn of the century. <laughs> but now I dig Motley Crue. And yeah, other than that, pretty solid weekend. My wife was, you know, visiting her mom. So I had the house to myself, but kept it productive, got some shit taken care of. You know, it's nice to be alone, but I do get lonely, so I'll be happy to have her back. And I'm. I just put out a video 
Um, Talking Thrash. Big four first albums ranked. So aside from the podcast every week, I'm working to do a, a YouTube video every week too. So with the podcast being on YouTube right now, it's basically two videos a week from me. And again, working really hard to get more Raptor Riot material. So enjoy the teasers and enjoy the rest of the podcast.